Okay, so let's start today's section. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Owen, and uh, we are happy to invite Sebastian from Watari to join as a co-host. Hello. Yeah. Uh, in next slide, we will give an introduction about ourselves. Today, we are going to talk about smart camera and how it can leverage deep learning to bring unlimited kinds of computer vision application to your business case. A recorded version and the slides of this webinar will be available later. And uh, we will reserve five to 10 minutes for Q&A after our presentation. So if you think of some question, you can just type into the Q&A box, then we will pick up and uh, answer it. During the webinar, we will give five posts since we would like to take it as a reference while developing our future solutions. And welcome to those who just joined. So let's get the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. Short introduction about myself. I'm Owen and uh, I'm the product solution manager of Aon. I'm mainly responsible for seeking interesting applications and collaborating with partners to bring sophisticated solution to the business world. That's how we met and work with Watari to create smart camera solution based on our app products. Up is a brand founded by Aon and the uh, up team aims to work with market leaders in different vertical markets to bring innovation in technology, integrated solutions, and build a large online community to work closely with developers. And we are pleased to have uh, Sebastian join today and I will give the floor to him for introduction. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much, Owen. Yeah. So also a warm welcome from all of us here at Vatari and from myself, my name is Sebastian. I'm one of the co-founders of Vatari, and I'm mainly responsible uh, for the software part here at Vatari and everything concerning deep learning, so to say. And I myself have been a software engineer um, my whole life, and I studied uh, computer science at the University of Munich. And then through Vatari and this project, I came uh, to the topics of art artificial intelligence and deep learning and how to efficiently provide this on the edge um, both soft and hardware stacks. And that's what we will talk about today. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sebastian. Okay, so let's start on our topic. So global smart camera market was valued at $4.61 billion in 2018. And uh, its project to reach uh, $9.17 billion by 2026. Why is smart camera getting more and more popular in the market recently? The ability to capture and process images within smart camera means that you don't need an external PC to enable localized decision making so that you can have a smaller fo system footprints to further streamline your machine vision systems. Besides the modular design and uh, great customizations allow you to get a versatile platform for different kinds of machine vision tasks within a compact size device. It sounds fantastic to get such an amazing stuff, but it's not easy to build it from the beginning. What challenges will you face while building smart camera? In hardware wise, um, it's definitely painful to find out that essential component of your ongoing project is going to end of life soon, or you find out there's an interesting project, but you need to upgrade inferencing power or add connectivity to fulfill the project requirement. And you don't have such scalability or expandability built within your solution. And for software wise, when you start your AI project, you might think of what knowledge you need to have to deal with the complicated data set. Which AI frameworks should you use to train your AI model to get better performance? And how much time you need to put within the training process to get an optimized model? From this slide, I think you may get a rough idea regarding to benefits, challenges, and the trends of the smart camera. Here, I will release the first poll to see how many ongoing projects is happening now. So uh, please help to find some time to fill in. It's an easy one. I think, uh, Sebastian, you can see the poll question, right? Exactly, yes. Yeah, okay.
since they are half of audience already have an ongoing smart camera or machine vision project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's wait for 15 more seconds, then we move on. Okay. Now let's find out why Aon App Solution is the best choice as a foundation to build your solution. Later, Sebastian will add on more on how they can help for the software part. We summarize these points based on Watari's experience while developing their smart camera. In general, App provides an end to end platform with only one vendor, which is Intel, to cover the core components from CPU, VPU to OpenVINO toolkits for your project development. Plus, the expandability, scalability provided from App and the clear longevity plan from Intel will provide the perfect foundation with flexibility to start your project and allows for long term deployment. Let's dive deeper for app product lines. We all know there isn't one size fits for all solutions. So as you can see here, we provide products with different form factor and uh, expansion interface to fulfill different kinds of project requirements, such as if you need Wi-Fi or you need Bluetooth, LTE connection, or even you need more inferencing power. And from the uh, up product line will provide uh, different kinds of carryables or expandable, expandable modules to fulfill this kind of request. From the both based on Intel Atom CPU to uh, Core i8 generation uh, processor, we provide clear longevity policy that is aligned with Intel so that you don't need to worry that your hardware platform will be disappear in the middle of your development. So this is our Vision Accelerator product line. Uh, some of you may be already familiar with our existing modules based on Intel Mira X VPU. We provide expandable modules with different quantities of uh, Intel VPU inside. We have mini PCIe card for one Mira X, N.2 for two, Vision Plus card for three, and we even have PCIe by four interface for four and eight Mira X. Then we also plan Intel's latest VPU called Kimbe into our product roadmap. Kimbe's performance is seven times or even up to 10 times better than Mira X, depends on different skills from Kimbe. We design N.2 uh, to the Azure card, Vision Plus card, and the PCIe card for this Kimbe accelerator module. As I mentioned before, there's no one size fits for all solution. For smart camera, it requires a uh, compact size. In such case, our computer and module up core series products is a perfect fit since it can leverage multiple choices of carryables to give you the flexibility to expand your solution. Also, you can uh, leverage the vision accelerator I mentioned before to give you the AI inferencing power into this solution. So that's why Watari selects up core series as a foundation to build their neural camera. They leverage UpCore to build their first generation neural camera called Watari and Cam Core. And then they are building the upgraded version based on UpCore Plus called Watari and Cam Plus. And this upgrade version will be available within next few months. Yeah. Uh, in this slide, I will talk about how we and Watari built neural camera together. From up, we provide the up core uh, carrier board and the uh, up AI core X for inferencing. From Watari, they help to integrate all the stops together with the camera module and the custom PCB to supply power uh, to whole camera system. Then you can get the Watari neural camera and leverage the power of Watari Neural Lab is their end-to-end -end, uh, AI training platform. You can have a camera integrated with OpenVINO which enables the optimized resource allocation uh, among CPU, GPU, and the VPU. 
besides the Onyx framework can allow you to uh, migrate your AI models from different frameworks. So uh, from next slide, you, you may wonder why I uh, mentioning neural camera for the solution we built together. From next slide, Sebastian will take you explore the reason and the strengths of this integrated solution. So I will pass the vote to mm -hmm. Sebastian. Yeah. Thank you, Owen. So we heard from Owen now a lot about the hardware that you need in order to bring AI to the edge and to fulfill computer vision tasks. And about these computer vision tasks, tasks I want to start now. So what can you do actually with AI on the edge and what uh, is solvable now, which was not um, doable with the traditional algorithms we used in the past. So we at Batari mainly have these um, three areas right now, uh, quality control, A and PR, so the license plate recognition of cars, and also for example, PPE and people detection. So in these areas, um, we could make great advances using AI, especially for example, in the quality control area, where it's now possible to detect changes in colors of products, for example, which was uh, is a really, really difficult task um, using traditional algorithms. And well, also regarding the current Corona COVID-19 crisis, um, it's also, we, we experimented a lot with medical imaging images and yeah, the analysis of such to, for example, gather information about the blood cells and detect such diseases in, a, in an early stage. And yeah, there's a lot of different things you can now do with, um, with, AR, with AI. And we ourselves at Vatari learn every day a new use case, so to say, or so there's millions of them out there. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, uh, after this slide, I will release the poll question. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And then we should wait for around maybe one minute to let the audience mm -hmm. finish the poll. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, most of the uh, audience already answered a question, so let's mm -hmm. move on. All right. Yeah. So after seeing the use cases now, uh, I want to introduce the Vatari NCAM or NeuroCAM that we built together with um, Ion Hardware. So what we experienced uh, when we entered the market of computer vision with AI was that there was no suitable camera out there to, that could efficiently execute these AI models and so we built one our, um, ourselves. And for us, it was important that the camera is really flexible. So we approached a modular design where um, you can easily exchange ex uh, components according to your needs. So for example, for ANPR, we use lower resolution um, image sensors uh, compared to the quality control sector where we use uh, higher resolution ones. So depending on the application, we can uh, modify our smart camera and all of the components that you need in order to inference um, the AI model on the edge are included in the smart cam. So there, in our end cam, there's no connection necessary to a cloud service or something like that. All the processing happens um, inside the camera. And it has such a small form factor that it's very easy to integrate it into any kind of housing. So here on this slide, for example, you can see our um, typical ANPR housing. Okay, then um, to the specifications of our camera. So this is just an um, example configuration you see here. And that's for, I think, yeah, one of our AMPR cameras, for example. And so there's various different things here. Uh, the main key point to take away here is, in my opinion, um, these are just example configurations. And due to the modul modularity I just mentioned, pretty much anything here can be adjusted to your needs. So if you say, okay, this resolution doesn't, um, 
yeah, I need, I need more resolution than that for my application, that's no problem. We can simply swap out the image sensor and all the um, core components can stay the same. Or if you say, oh, we need um, more performance, then for example, we have upcoming the NCAM Plus, as Owen already mentioned, with up to three um, Myriad X chips. And later on this year, um, when Kim Bay is finally released and we can incorporate it into the camera, then we have, so to say, unlimited performance here. Yeah. Okay, then next. Okay. After this one, I will launch uh, the third poll. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I think uh, half of our audience already mm -hmm. answered it. So All let's right. go. Yeah. Then let's continue. Sure. Um, we look now at most of the hardware of the NCAM, but um, we at Vatari, we realized one thing. Um, it doesn't, yeah, it's not enough to just develop some piece of hardware and yeah, expect all the customers to um, build the software used to, um, they need for AI themselves. So a lot of industry partners out there, they want one Find a finished solution they can simply use and incorporate into their um, production line. So we at Vatari also provide all the software needed to, in order to inference the AI on the edge. That includes, for example, a custom Linux-based operating system that runs on the camera, and it allows you to simply upload your own model there. And we don't only support classification, but also object detection, for example, with AMPR, but also segmentation models where you can really define um, certain areas on images that you want to detect. And you can, for example, do area calculations from that. And in Batari, we also support very, various different, uh, different frameworks. So we, of course, there are the, tr the traditional ones like TensorFlow, Darknet, Cafe, PyTorch, you name it. And what they used to do or what they still do is uh, output a lot of their models in the proprietary format, depending on the platform. But with the O and X framework now, it's really easy um, to output one standard model from all of these frameworks that you can simply then upload to the camera. So it's no longer restricted to just one or two frameworks, but you can, as long as the framework supports O and X, you can use the framework um, that you want. For us, it was also very important um, to have end-to-end -end encryption on our camera. So security plays a huge role and all, all of our yeah, software and hardware components, we strive to make them as secure as possible because there are a lot of cameras out there that you can buy off the shelf, which, um, yeah, they don't really enforce any kind of security and are easily, um, can easily be hacked. And that's, that's just unacceptable um, in, this, in our area. Mm. And as at last, we have also our vision UI that we provide with the smart cam. So it allows you to upload the own and X model and then you can also see the results um, that the camera detects. And on the next slide now, we can see an example video of that. Here you can see a model um, of vision that was detected to train, uh, to the, that was trained to detect cookies. And here, for example, we have one with the PPE example. And all of this inferencing you see here is done on the camera itself. So for such a small camera, the performance is quite astonishing. And the use cases are, there are various use cases that you can train um, a model for and apply it on a camera. Okay, then we can head on to the next slide. Which brings us to kind of our end-to-end -end pipeline, Matari NLAB, we call that. Because right now we have talked about the neural cam and the software stack, we need to do the inference on the AI. But in order to really use AI, so um, you have an idea that you want to recognize some things on images, to the final product where you have an actual camera that can be used for this application, there are a, a huge number of steps you have to do. And again, we want to provide a, whole, a solution that is easy for the customer and where he has to do as little work as possible. That means um, 
if a customer comes to us, we can discuss the initial situation of, of his, uh, of the customer. And if necessary, we can then capture images of the use case. And from there on, Batari basically does, does all the work for you. Um, from the AI model preparation, that means um, labeling all the data, get it, gathering the results, and ensuring also the quality of the labeled data set, to the actual model training, which is done in our cloud. Here we use various different frameworks, as already mentioned before, and simply choose the best one by benchmarking the AI model at the end. This allows us to uh, try different things during the training for the use case of the customer and only use the best AI model for his task. Then we output it, for example, in ONNX format or some proprietary formats are still supported, like TensorFlow, this is natively supported on the CAM. And on the neural CAM, you can then load the AI model and do um, integrated, do the inference of the AI model and finally build an application that leverages the power now of AI. Yeah, this is uh, a rough overview. And now we go into more detail about NLAB. So NLAB we call, is, uh, we call it Neural Lab and it's a user-friendly end-to-end deep learning platform. End-to-end -end because um, you come with images to us and NLAB outputs a ready-to-use AI model that you can upload to the NCAM. That's why we call it end-to-end. -end. And we do all of the uh, deep, line, deep learning cycle, all the steps that you need to do um, are covered by NLAB. A special thing about it is that we have um, an AI that supports you already during the labeling. That means, um, for example, let's take the use case of labeling um, license plates of cars. After you have labeled, for example, 50 or 100 images, um, NLAB already performs a training task in the background. And once that's done, it will upload the AI model to the labeling service. And the labeling service can then um, help you um, during the labeling. That means the images before you get them will already be analyzed by the AI. And if it detects a box, that box will already be drawn there, greatly um, reducing the amount of work you have to do yourself. And as we already mentioned, we support all of the common frameworks. We do the automatic benchmarking to choose which one is the best. And it then neatly fits with the NCAM um, by outputting a model that is already compliant and compatible with the NCAM. Okay, and here I think we have our last poll question. Yeah. So I already launched it. Right, so I think we can move on to mm -hmm. next slide. All right. So Owen, do you want to wrap up or? Should yeah. I? Mm -hmm. uh, I can do the wrap up and if I miss anything, you just uh, add on it, <laughs> it's no problem. Yeah. Uh, thanks for Sebastian's uh, detailed explanation regarding to neural camera and the neural lab and uh, the pipeline of it, which is very, uh, useful tool to help uh, developer or the business to streamline their process to get a useful uh, smart camera solution. So in conclusion, App provides a good starting point for development of project. project. And the compiler expertise of Watari, such as their neural lab AI training platform or their software support and their knowledge in the AI area, including the uh, uh, labeling and the other essential uh, tasks we can turn a hardware platform into an all-in-one and integrated AI solution. And it comes with uh, different kinds of application, like uh, Sebastian just mentioned before, uh, license plate recognition or uh, quality control or personal protective equipment detection, etc. And uh, together, Aeon and Watari will provide everything you need to start your AI project. Yeah. Perfect. I have okay. Nothing to add here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So 
Uh, next slide, I want to share some good news with you. Uh, we collaborate with Watari and uh, we provide a proof of concept campaign based on Watari first generation neural camera. And it, it would include uh, Watari neural camera and with the uh, uh, customized AI models based on your business case. And it can achieve 95% accuracy rate. If you need higher and uh, after POC, we can discuss based on uh, your requirement and to optimize it. And we can de deliver this POC campaign package within 14 days. And the price is at 2000 US dollars. So contact us if you are interested. So I think that's the end of our presentation. And uh, now it's the q and time. Thank you for, your, for joining the webinar. And uh, if you have any question, just type in the Q&A box and uh, uh, Sebastian and I can see it and help. Mm -hmm. Okay, should we start? Uh, we start from the top, right? Um, okay, there was one person who could hardly hear us, audios to maximum. I'm sorry uh, that we just read it now. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't saw it. But uh, uh, I, I think okay. I can hear Sebastian well, and uh, maybe we, we should uh, optimize the setting next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Then um, another question, what, mm -hmm. what OS options do we have? So um, if you mean the neural, the NCAM, Batari NCAM, basically you can, of course, use the OS it already comes with, but if you want to do totally your own stuff, um, you are free to upload uh, any OS that you want. So you could up, um, apply a Windows or, or um, Linux-based distribution, for example. Of course, then you have to do most of the work yourself meaning um, talking with the VPU chip over OpenVINO, loading the model, um, do, we do the video encoding and all the stuff. But basically, if you want, um, you have all the freedom. Okay. And uh, next one is the, what are our CPU and the GPU requirements to couple with the VPU? Also, can you discuss the task divisions between them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want? Uh, I can also answer that one. Yeah. So um, basically the requirements for CPU, GPU to couple with a VPU, um, you don't need a specific CPU type in order to talk with a VPU. Um, so it's more like uh, which kind of software stack you're using. So with OpenVINO, for example, you can mainly talk to the Myriad X chip. Um, but there are also, of course, the system on the chip designs from NVIDIA, so there's, the libraries are different. But uh, the second part of your question is very interesting, um, where you, you're asking, can you discuss, discuss the task divisions between them? Um, basically, what we do is also a very optimized version here already. The CPU is mainly handling the data fetching um, from the video stream and so for, uh, sorry from the image sensor and it will send it to the vpu over the openvino framework in order to do the inferencing and once we get the results back and you want for example to see a video stream um, live on your computer over the vision um, ui application we are using the integrated gpu then to do most of the heavy lifting with the video encoding for example so um, what we have seen uh, when deploying our camera, for example, with ANPR, is a good usage across all of these chips. So um, we're leveraging everything that we can. Okay. And next trip question. I think next one is the, can the camera work in adverse light conditions for others? others. Yeah, it's like a driving assist. Yeah, right. yeah. assistive system. system. Um, so basically, in, of, course, of course, a car is a more um, specialized environment, I have to say. So surely there would be the need to customize the camera a little bit in order to fit it to the requirements that a car can um, offer. But uh, regarding the light conditions, um, that's something that mostly depends on what kind of AI model you use. Um, for example, um, if you have a training set with um, images that from various different lighting scenarios, so from night vision, uh, from, from um, daytime and nighttime, 
Um, then you get an AI model usually, which is very sophisticated and uh, can operate well in various lighting conditions. That was our um, yeah, experience when working with ANPR. With traditional algorithms, it was a pain to find, uh, for example, the license plates um, when there was absolutely no light and you could, could just see the reflection of the plate. But with AR, AI, it's, it's really easy now to do that. And then we have a last question. The solution of identified personal protective equipment is a complete solution ready to use. Yes, um, this is something we have already done as a proof of concept. And so if you are interested in such a solution, you can simply reach out to us and we can discuss details. But we can basically already deliver cameras um, that come with such models. Okay. And next one is from Philip. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to connect many units in a wireless mass network and run an AI model which uses data capture from multiple units and share those model automatically between units like detecting pattern in traffic across different locations? Is there a infrared in camera available? I think it's infrared, right? I yes, I, okay. Yeah. Infrared, yes. Um, of course, as we said, modular design. So um, mm -hmm. if you, for example, need a special infrared sensor, that's um, possible. I think we already also have one included. And okay, so the first question is more, can you do, um, yeah, can you connect multiple cameras at various locations together? Um, out of the box, we don't yet have a wireless mesh network, but of course you could um, collect all the data from these different um, points and uh, yeah, collect them at one central server location um, if you want that. But you can also, since we don't do all the inferencing of the cameras on the edge, all of the cameras themselves could um, analyze the traffic and just send the results, which have a very, very um, small data size over the wireless networks to um, a central server unit, for example. And there you could do the more, yeah, meta-analysis of all these information. So detecting on, for example, output of four cameras at this cross-section, you could then calculate, okay, the traffic is right now at 50%. Maybe we can um, change the setting of the traffic lights, for example. But out of the box, um, wireless mesh networks are not yet supported. But if that's a need um, that, one you, uh, that you need, then there's, it's definitely possible to do that. Yeah. Okay, then does CAM, um, CAMs are IP67 standard. This basically is only dependent on the housing you, yeah. um, you want. And for uh, some customers in the quality control area, we have already done housings with um, IP67 standard. So if you want it, it's possible. Yes, definitely. Okay, then we have also, can I use this module with multiple camera for agricultural application? Um, short answer, yes, it's totally possible. And then we have, which are the major industries you want to target with your solutions? Which certifications did you fulfill? Okay, so um, for example, I will ask the second question first. Um, certifications, for example, the encryption standard we use and also the OS have been pen tested by a German company, Secuvera. And um, the main industries we want to target with our solutions, the ones are basically I mentioned in, my, in the presentation. So right now it's um, ANPR, quality control and um, PPE detection. But you know, the, we don't even want to f um, say we're just doing three things or three areas right now because uh, the platform and the camera we developed is so versatile that um, on a daily basis, customers come to us and ask for a specific use case. And, it's always a little bit different from customer to customer, of course, but we have not yet found something that we couldn't do. And in the future, it's even, we could even think about analyzing audio signals, for example, because you can also visualize them as an image. So you see there's almost no end to, to which kind of solutions we want. But the main ones are the three I mentioned in my presentation. Okay. 
So for next one, what are the main advantages of Apple solutions compared to the new Nuke solutions from Intel? Mm, for this one, I would say we up provide a, a very good supportive infrastructure uh, to the customer or developers. So let's uh, like uh, Watari, when Watari uh, Sebastian contacted us uh, in the beginning, we uh, give a uh, prompt and uh, informative feedback and uh, discuss based on their requirement to support their smart camera development. So they can have a smooth cycle for development of their smart camera. And uh, we take into consideration for different kinds of uh, use cases. So we have uh, different uh, expandable modules and uh, uh, different interface form factor to fulfill uh, different requirement from the market. So I hope this answer uh, your question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would also add to that. Um, yeah. It's basically this, this versatility so that we can, that you can connect components according to your needs is what is the most appelling um, thing about up for us. Mm -hmm. And also the form factor. So if we look at the up core, it's, it's really, really, really small. Yeah. And this allowed us to build a smart camera, such powerful smart camera in such a small form factor. Yes, this is, this is a great advantage for us. Yeah. I think, uh, Sebastian, do you have a, I, I think you, you mentioned in the beginning you have four you want to share, right? For more questions or we are them here? Uh, no, sorry, they have already been, been answered. Okay, okay, got it. Yeah, so I think uh, I didn't see any further questions. So I think that's it. And uh, thanks for uh, Sebastian to join. And uh, thanks for everyone to, oh, there's a new one. So uh, yes, <laughs> okay. I would okay. also say if anybody has more questions, but you come up with them later, you are uh, invited to contact us. Yeah. So you can also write me an email. It's here on the page right now, Sebastian Edvataria. Oh, or you write us on LinkedIn or Twitter. Doesn't matter. But sure. I would be happy. Okay. So where can we get more technical information about the Vatari and Cam? Mm -hmm. um, you can look up on the web website, but I think we uh, have not yet all the technical specifications up there. So if you want, you can write me an email, as I said, then yeah. we can give you um, all the specifications we have right now. And they will also soon be available um, for your convenience on the website then. Yes. And are you distributing globally or just Europe? No, we will be, we are distributing globally. Yeah. And uh, regarding to the technical in information part, uh, since we also collaborated with Watari to create a flyer for the Watari camera, exactly. like for POC campaign. So uh, after this webinar, we will share by newsletter to everyone uh, join this webinar and also the mailing list within our database so you can get the latest information. Then if you have uh, any interest or question, just contact uh, us or Watari. We, can, we are happy to help on your question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Then I put it on done. Okay. Then also, thank you very much, Owen, for having me. Yeah. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Yeah. And then I wish everyone a nice day. Yeah, sure. Thank you. So, Thank you. Bye bye. Take care.